Welcome to topic nine, making a brick fly, part four of four. In the last three videos, we covered an introduction to propulsion, piston engines and propellers, jet engines, and rockets and space flight engines. In this video, we're gonna cover efficiency and all the different measures of efficiency. As we get started, it's best to revisit our questions. We've already talked about how we generate thrust. We really realized that while we can throw passengers overboard, i.e. provide momentum that we shift out the back, it's probably not a wise idea. We've talked about the basic types of propulsion, um, including piston props, jets, ramjets, turbojets, turbofans, scramjets, rockets, both chemical and electric. We'll talk about a few more at the end of this lecture or this video. And we're now going to talk about the measures of efficiency. All along, I've wanted you to think about the differences between aeronautics and astronautic propulsion systems and also the similarities. And we'll talk a little bit more about these as we get into our efficiency metrics. So let's kick off with efficiencies. Our propulsion system has two basic types of efficiency separate from the propeller efficiency. One is the propulsive efficiency and the other is the thermal efficiency. And these just relate different types of power. The first one, the propulsive efficiency, which is also known as A to P or A to PR, similar to the propeller, um, but different, is our thrust power divided by the delta in kinetic energy rate. So, you know, we talked about how thrust is just the rate of momentum change, T, uh, M dot times the delta V, and our kinetic energy is M dot times delta V squared. That's our change in kinetic energy. So we see that. We can then convert thrust to thrust power by multiplying that times the uh, free stream speed. And that gives our thrust power. We have our uh, kinetic energy change and we can substitute it in our generic thrust equation and we get that. And it's a pretty straightforward but complicated way. We'll do a bunch of simplifications such as F is effectively zero and P equals P infinity in many cases that really simplify this equation. We'll talk a little bit more about that in a second. Our thermal efficiency on the other hand is our delta kinetic energy rate times the fuel heating rate. So that's the mass flow of fuel times the fuel heating value. And for something like kerosene that we use in a jet engine, it's about 42 megajoules per kilogram. Hydrogen is obviously higher than that and heavier fuels are lower than that. But it's just a good start in what we use. Now, the interesting thing is because you'll notice that delta Ke is in both the numerator of thermal efficiency and the denominator of propulsive efficiency, what we do to raise our thermal efficiency very often hurts our propulsive efficiency. And we'll talk a little bit more about that in the trades. So if we combine and we simplify propulsive efficiency, we can get rid of that uh, uh, <clears throat> pressure term and we can get rid of the M dot rates and we can move the two and we can sim simplify it through here so that NP is two over one plus V jet or exit velocity over the inlet or infinite V infinity. Again, for a rocket, the inlet velocity is zero. So it's one plus Vj, two over one plus Vj. Also remember that T is M dot Vj minus V infinity. So how do we get the highest value possible in this? Well, obviously we want it to be one. That's the most we can get. So that's two over two. And that only occurs when Vj and V infinity are equal. Unfortunately, if looking at our thrust equation, if Vj and V infinity are equal, our thrust goes to zero. So as propulsive efficiency goes to one, our thrust goes to zero. And that's why we can say for sure, when we look at total efficiency, which is a function of propulsive and thermal efficiency, we can say that as our efficiency of a propulsion system goes up, our specific thrust, that's T over M dot, that's this, must decrease. Remember back from video one, we talked about that. Again, specific thrust is T over M dot A, and TSFC, which is our thrust specific fuel consumption, is M dot F over T. Again, these things are related to each other based on the fuel ratios and the like, or in a rocket, they are exactly the same thing. Our specific impulse that we use for space propulsion systems, or ISP, is just T over G M dot F in seconds. Now, What's interesting is a G, if we're using that one over our TSFC we talked about, our G is one. If we use 
consistent units, newtons and kilograms and seconds, then we have a G that's 9.81. If we use pounds and slugs in seconds, our G is 32.2 feet per second squared. But in general, our TSFC goes down, our specific impulse goes up. Now, notice this is typically done in per hour, though sometimes per second. And this is always in seconds. So remember your hour to second conversion. There are 3,600 seconds in an hour. But in general, specific thrust goes down, TSFC improves, also goes down, ISP goes up. And an ISP of 3,600 seconds is a specific impulse of one kilogram per kil, or TSFC of one kilogram per kilogram per hour. Okay, let's talk about ISP as a function of Mach. Again, it's TSFC is the other direction. As we can see, we go from Mach 0 to 10, and you see that rockets are pretty consistent down in this 250, 300, 400 second range. Our turbofans can exceed 6,000 seconds. So if, keep in mind that's 0.5 of a, as a TSFC. In some cases, they're as low as 0.3, so that would be 9,000 seconds, or almost 10,000 seconds. Um, and they go down with with velocity. Our turbo fans with afterburners are even lower and turbo jets are in this. Our ramjets come into play here in the Mach 2 to 4 range and they're a little bit lower in scramjets. And as you can see asymptotically, they follow the same curve as our theoretical fuel heating value here. So they asymptote down and eventually as you go to infinity, a rocket becomes the most efficient propulsion system. So we have to increase our specific thrust, but we increase decrease our uh, we decrease our ISP as a consequence. Now, an interesting thing, when you get to aircraft performance next year, we're going to talk about L over M, L over D divided by C. So as this goes down, our Mach number is also going up. So it's that ratio, the way they curve. And you'll see the drop here is substantial for a slight increase in Mach number. But if we look at this curve, it is almost exactly one over the increase in Mach number. So the trade isn't as bad as it looks at first order because we're flying so much faster. So of course the key is to keep our lift to drag ratio up as high as possible. Okay, we've talked about a lot of what we call Newtonian momentum exchange based propulsion systems. What about non-rocket, non-mass flow propulsion systems? We can use an offboard source like a solar sail or a laser. Um, they're very similar. You have some sort of reflector that catches either solar radiation, the solar wind, cosmic radiation, or we can actually propel it with a laser. Um, there's also more fanciful things like reactionless drives, such as anti-gravity and zero point source. And some of those were at least at TRL zero or one, and they might progress, but most of those are probably science fiction and I wouldn't worry too much about it. And then we have the concept of a warp drive, which really isn't a propulsion system at all. It's a reality distortion system. And the concept is instead of um, moving through space-time in normal. We actually stretch space-time out behind us and squeeze space-time out in, fr in front of us. So we don't actually travel as far. And then we would use a normal propulsion system, either a reactionless or reaction drive, maybe moving hydrogen around and the like. And that's just the, a kind of sensible, but not real propulsion system. So as a wrap up, over the last four videos, we've introduced you to the basics of propulsion, how we generate thrust, uh, the delta in kinetic energy. We've introduced you to different types of propulsion systems, air breathing, piston props, jets and the like, rockets, both chemical and electrical. And we've talked to you about efficiencies, propulsive and thermal and propeller, specific fuel consumption, and it's um, inverse, the specific impulse. And that gives you a basic understanding. And that links back to the stuff we did last week, our uh, last topic in uh, space flight, but also in our flight mechanics and we'll link to aircraft performance in the future. So thank you very much and stay tuned. If you want any more, you can read Anderson chapter nine. And next week, we're gonna talk about um, <clears throat> artifacts of import. Thank you very much and stay tuned.